Bam! It's impossible to describe just how influential Emeril Lagasse was in shaping today's culinary landscape. But in 2007, Food Network canceled the show that got so many people into the kitchen and helped launch the network. So why did Emeril Live really get the axe? When the cancellation of Emeril Live was announced, Food Network publicist Carrie Welch released a vague statement on the network's decision, saying, "...the only reason the show would be canceled is that it hit a ton of television milestones and, you know, all good things come to an end." Former Food Network president Brooke Johnson gave a similarly vague statement to The New York Times, saying that while they still valued Lagasse as an integral part of their team, "...all good things come to an end and it was time to do something new." Of course, that wasn't the whole story. Well, we won't go there. It's like, it's a long story. You want to really know? The end of Emerald Live was quite a big deal. Since Food Network is huge today, it's easy to forget that way back in the olden days of the 1990s, it was struggling to even stay afloat. Alan Salkin's book From Scratch, Inside the Food Network, gives us a pretty unblinking look at just how far they've come, largely thanks to Emerald Live, which was launched in 1997. In the early days, it wasn't so much the Food Network as it was the Emerald Network. He held the nightly 8 p.m. time slot, and at a time when the Young Network was barely squeaking by, it was Lagasse they flaunted to prove that they had the chops to make it. Salkin describes him as their million-dollar man in chef's whites, the star they pointed to when they wanted to impress. His contract in those early days was a three-year deal, for which he was paid $333,334 each year. While that might not sound like much in comparison to what some celebrities are paid today, Food Network lauded it as a million-dollar deal. The Food Network was essentially built on Lagasse's shoulders. Though network execs were boasting about their average primetime viewership of 778,000, they weren't talking about their flagging daily ratings, which were down to 544,000 from the previous year's 580,000. The numbers loss was significant. Food Network was suddenly left owing refunds to advertisers who weren't reaching the viewership they'd signed on for. We all know slumping numbers is a very real indication that something at a network needs to change, and that meant rethinking just what kind of programming they were putting on. Emerald Live became yesterday's news, while contemporary viewers wanted more. While Emerald Live was going up in flames, cable TV was beginning to lean into reality competition shows. Food Network's head of marketing reached out to Emerald's agent to try to get the chef on an up-and-coming show that would help expose him to new viewers and hopefully lure those viewers over to Emerald Live. That up-and-coming show was Iron Chef, and Emeril was having none of it. In a 2016 interview with GQ, the celebrity chef explained why reality TV just isn't his thing, saying, "...I'm old-fashioned, and I want to teach people how to cook, how to eat, how to serve, how to shop, how to drink wine, how to mix a cocktail properly. I didn't necessarily at the time want to get into this competition stuff." Like many Food Network stars today, Lagasse had a full range of merchandise, including everything from cookbooks and cookware to salad dressings and spices. But when Food Network negotiated his contract, they hadn't accounted for the money the popular chef was going to make selling his branded goods. Bam! Just like that. According to the New York Times, Food Network's policy began to shift a bit in 2006. The network wanted more control over the licensing agreements their stars made. So when they started signing newcomers like Bobby Flay and Rachel Ray, they worked it into their contracts that chef-branded product lines would be as much about the network as they were about the chef. Lagasse's contract had no such writer, which meant Food Network wasn't making the same kind of money off his outside ventures. And as the network became more of a brand, there simply wasn't any room for Lagasse to continue to receive special treatment. Emerald Live was one of the network's flagship shows, and Lagasse was arguably their biggest star. But with his star power came a hefty price tag, and that meant the still-fledging network had to make some difficult decisions. According to Alan Salkin's book From Scratch Inside the Food Network, it was costing hundreds of thousands of dollars a week to keep Emerald Live on air, and those big paychecks were hitting the network where it hurt. On the other hand, each episode of Flay and Ray's respective shows cost an average of just $40,000 at the time, a price which included their salary. Food Network had a choice to make — either support one week of Emerald Live with their budget, or produce an entire 13-episode season of a show featuring up-and-coming young talent within the industry. You don't need a business degree to figure out why they chose the latter. It's been more than a decade since the cancellation of Emerald Live, and since then, Lagasse has gone on to do a number of other shows. The celebrity chef told GQ, "...when it ended, everybody felt like it was time for a little break. I didn't necessarily think that, but that's what everybody else thought. That maybe it was time for a break from Emerald. And, you know, so I went and did some other things." Because you know, men belong in the kitchen. There's no denying that Emerald Live helped make Food Network into the juggernaut of programming it is today. But does Lagasse think they helped him in any way? It's doubtful. Lagasse dish to eater, the Food Network is not why I have 12 restaurants. It all started at Emeralds on Shop. 
check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite celebrity chefs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.